Okay, so for this drawing video, what we're going to look at is the development of purlin bevels. Okay, so <clears throat> from the drawing here, you can see uh, basically this would be the common rafter, okay, and this here is the purlin. So you've got the edge of the purlin and you have the side of the purlin, okay. Now, the angle of inclination for this particular rafter is 30 degrees. The common rafter inclination, by way the pitch of the common rafter, is 30 degrees. So a 30 degree is the pitch of the common rafter. The position for uh, the starting of this drawing is if you move down 70 millimeters, down 70 millimeters from the top of the sheet, down 70 millimeters, and in 185 from the left hand side of the sheet. So down 70 millimeters from the top of the sheet and in from the left hand side 185 millimeters to this point here on the purlin. The size of the purlin is 30 millimeters by 50 millimeters. 30 millimeters by 50 millimeters. Now the size of the common rafter here, by way of the, the depth of the common rafter here, is 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters. So roughly to a scale, roughly to a scale of uh, one is to three. Okay. So uh, so you're purling down 70 from the top of the sheet and in from the left hand side of the sheet, 185 millimeters to this point here. The size of the purlin here is 30 millimeters for the edge and 50 millimeters for the side. You can proceed then to draw the purlin in place. Now, if the common rafter, which it is at 30 degrees pitch, that's the common rafter, this means that this angle here is 60 degrees. 60 degrees, and this angle here is 30 degrees. So 60 degrees, 30 degrees, okay? And then proceed to draw in your purlin. As I said, the common rafter is 50 millimeters above the purlin. So you simply draw the bottom of the common rafter here, move 50 millimeters, okay, across at 90 degrees from the, the edge here of the common rafter and just do the top of the common rafter and break it anywhere at the top and bottom there, right? It's not, it's not, not, not nothing in particular there by way of a measurement, just break it anywhere, okay? Now, the plan, the position for the plan is if you move then from down from the original point here on the purlin, which was down 70 and in 185, from this point here, move down 145 millimeters to this point here on the hip. That's the center line of the hip, okay? So down 145 millimeters from this point here on the purlin, down 145 millimeters to this point here on the hip. Draw your hip in at 45 degrees, 45 degree angle. Okay, now from this point here, you're moving each side of that, that center line of the hip, move each side seven millimeters and seven millimeters. The hip on plan will be 14 millimeters in width here. Okay, 14 millimeters in width. So seven millimeters each side of the center line of the hip and then continue to proceed to draw in your hip rafter here on plan. You can break it anywhere each side. Now, when you're drawing in your purlin on plan, okay, you're simply bringing your points from the section detail here of the purlin on elevation, bring each of those points down. So I'm gonna do that in red, just to show you how that's done. So each of those points is brought down. Okay, so that's how you establish the position of your purlin on plan. Now, where these points hit the center line of the hip rafter, you simply bring them a return for the purlin at 
as a horizontal so as a horizontal line just bring the return and again break it anywhere uh, where it's convenient to do so okay so at uh, the bottom part of the pollen I could also bring down as a, as a just as a point if I so wish you will not see it uh, on, on the uh, plan but if I wanted to I could simply bring that bottom point down as well this bottom point here I'm only going to I'm only going to do it in pencil here uh, just to show you that bottom point okay now I'll, I'll actually just put the red red line here uh, okay so that bottom point and if I did bring it down as a red line all the way through it would go to that center line there and then return along the horizontal there from that center line now that red line there that broken line that I've just indicated there that is this bottom point on the pollen which you don't see on plan but I'm just showing you how it's how it's how, how you indicate it how you bring that point down to the center of the, the, the hip rafter and return it horizontally so you can see that line underneath what you what you don't see with regards to a view you put in as a broken line so anyway the objective of this uh, of this particular drawing exercise is to show you how to develop the particular pearl and bevels when you're looking down on plan and you see the uh, you've got a part elevation here and, and a part plan but when you're looking down on plan you do not see the true length of the edge or the true length of the side so from this point here again I'll just reinforce that line here thicker line so so that top point there if I bring it down just distinguish a little bit better here okay so that line there and then it's returned here okay so when I'm see what I'm seeing here on, on plan the distance on the edge here is not a true length the distance on the side here is not a true length so in order to establish well, you know what these cuts are going to be if I marked it exactly at 45 degrees it wouldn't meet when I pulled it in at that angle it wouldn't meet the hip uh, as it should okay by way of it cleanly hitting on the edge and cleanly hitting on the side so what I have to do is I have to work out well, what is actually from the plan here what are the the, the how does the uh, the bevels here impact on the problem for, for, for a real cut for a real cut so I simply do that by uh, first of all taking this point here on elevation so this point here I draw a horizontal through it okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my edge onto the horizontal and my side up onto the horizontal using this top point here as a swivel point now first of all i'm just going to draw through that point as a red line okay here okay so this is going to be my swivel point and i'm going to mark in uh, particular points that are being indexed so i'm going to use blue here so I'm going to use, uh, say, points uh, A here, A, B, and C. I'm not going to mark the bottom because I don't need to do that. Okay, so just A, B, and C. So I'm going to get my compass now and I'm going to pull those points around onto the horizontal. So point A and B that's the length of the edge okay I'm going to pull that around onto the horizontal points A and C I'm going to pull that around onto the horizontal okay now I'm going to indicate those uh, lines uh, using a green marker and I'm going to use a um, French curve just to show so you can see now I've got AB drawn up onto the horizontal and AC drawn up onto the horizontal here so I'm going to label those two points again this is going to be again using uh, my blue pen if I can find it let's 
Let it happen. So this is going to be B1, and this is going to be C1. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those points down onto plan. So I'm going to distinguish from the other red lines that I drew in just to draw the plan in. I'm going to distinguish them again. I'm going to use the green pen to bring the developed points down. So points, point B1, I bring down vertically. And point C1, I also bring down vertically. Now, on, on plan, I have points A, this is point A, okay, this is point C, this is point B. Now, what I have to do is I have to bring those points out to the correlating points. So point C, as I've brought it up onto the horizontal here, and point A, uh, B, A, B, I've brought it up onto the horizontal, so I've got C1 and B1. So I'm going to bring point C on plan uh, to meet that. So point C, again, I'm going to use green here. That point, where it hits, where this, this line C hits the side of the hip, I bring out to C1 here. And likewise with B, where B hits the side of the hip on plan, I bring out to establish this point here. So now I have two points. I have this point here, so I'll label that C2, and this point here, B2. Okay, now, what I've simply done is, again, just to recap, I've pulled AC on the elevation, which is the side of the purlin. I've pulled it around onto the horizontal. I've pulled the edge of the purlin, AB, around onto the horizontal, always using point A as a swivel point, okay, here. And then I've simply brought those points down onto the plan, I brought point C, so where line C there, point C hits the side of the hip, I brought it out to C1 to establish C2 here. Where B hits the side of the hip, I bring point B across on plan, down from where B1 is to establish point B2. Now, when I'm drawing uh, the, the bevels in, okay, I simply connect, first of all, from point C2 now to point A. A is still the silver point. And from point B2 to point A. Now I'm going to use uh, a different color pen for this. So from point, from point C2 there to point A, A black pen, I really like that. Point B2 to point A. Yeah. Now again, I'm going to try and distinguish the two here. This now is a development of the side. So it's the side here pulled up where the points here on the side on plan hit the side. I've brought point C out to meet it to get point C2 here. So this here then is a development of the side. So I pull the side up and that there is 
the side cut. doing is I'm just simply shading it in with brown, uh, a brown colouring pencil by way of the side cut. I'm drawn in here. That there is, this here is the side cut. Okay, and then I'll use another uh, different colour here for the edge. I'll just use a darker Colour for the edge. Try and distinguish that, maybe get a thicker nib. Um, point eight here, the back. Okay, so what we have here now, we have the edge bevel. side bevel. Cut. Okay, I hope you found that uh, demonstration uh, useful. Thank you.